expressive close-ups of faces reacting to events off-screen. This is a common device in Hollywood filmmaking, perhaps due in part to Spielberg's influence. Sometimes these shots even make explicit homage to his movies. This is not to say that Spielberg invented the technique. The expressive close-up existed as early as the days of D.W. Griffith, and has long been a staple of both international and classical Hollywood filmmaking. But it's safe to say that none have come close to applying this technique as prolifically throughout their filmmaking career as Spielberg has. He has used it in a variety of genres in any number of situations. Sudden shock. Or creeping dread. The trauma of remembering the past. Or of confronting the future. Chief Pemberton, what is this that I'm seeing? Discovering humanity in another person. In return for your good heart, I or discovering humanity in oneself. Be. be good in future, and you will be happy. From the beginning, Spielberg seemed to understand the cinematic power of faces in punctuating key moments. But for the most part, these early attempts are conventional close-ups that fit into established practices for genre filmmaking. Horror, suspense, drama, action. The breakthrough came with Close Encounters of the Third Kind, a film about humans discovering alien life forms, but is really about Spielberg discovering the full power of the face and grounding it in a personal ethos, the perpetual wonder of seeing things new. The film has no less than 30 shots that qualify as Spielberg faces, nearly twice the number of any other Spielberg film. Even one of the alien ambassadors gets one. One could call it a symphony of Spielberg faces, in which case, the orchestra members couldn't have been better chosen. Expressive, open-faced actors like Melinda Dillon, Richard Dreyfuss, and Carrie Guffey, a four-year-old boy who, in this scene, gives the face that amounts to a career revelation for Spielberg, a look of childlike awe that would inspire dozens more over the decades. Spielberg is so in love with Guffey's expression that in one scene he even uses it twice in one minute, coupled with another critical ingredient, the dolly shot. With its kinetic force, the dolly shot underscores the revelatory sensation experienced by those wearing the Spielberg face. With the dolly, the trademark Spielberg close-up was now fully realized. But with accumulated use in film after film, this expression became an all-too-familiar cue, both for the characters and the audience, to feel wonderment. By the time we get to the Jurassic Park movies in the 1990s, the manipulative qualities of the Spielberg face are fully apparent, utilized nearly every time we are expected to marvel at the film's computer-generated dinosaurs. Nowadays, it seems you can't have a spectacular special effects action sequence without a Spielberg face to cue you to be in awe. The Spielberg face has become something of a cliché, but there is at least one filmmaker who has dared to critically explore this device and even subvert its power on the audience. That director is Steven Spielberg. And I'm not referring to the unintentionally satirical character in Close Encounters who may have experienced one Spielberg face too many. In his post-9-11 movies, the Spielberg face is an expression of trauma in a world of perpetual danger. In War of the Worlds, Dakota Fanning wears an anti-Spielberg face of innocence lost, witnessing unspeakable horrors. <laughs> 